a hold to climb from New Tempe. I explain how IFR traffic affects this, my Johannesburg Special Rules standard route into Grand Central Airport. And an example of an IFR star above in the Johannesburg TMA. Lastly, a very intriguing crosswind approach onto runway 17. Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're flying into Grand Central Airport in Johannesburg from Bloemfontein, New Tempe. If you want to see a takeoff and the taxi to departure procedures from New Tempe, check out this video in the link above. Noticed Blunfetain approach had told us to stand by for climb until we reached Sut Durin. Oh, if you're wondering why I'm using Sky Vector and not Sky Demon like my previous video, my subscription is up and I am not flying this month, so Sky Vector it is. Anyhow, the reason behind the hold for climb is simple. You have IFR traffic being radar vectored inbound or outbound of the TMA. You also have the initial approach fix, Dugzo, of the RNAV approach into runway 20 at Banfisher Airport. Dugzo is close to overhead New Tempe and starts at 8,000 feet. But lower than this is the terminal arrival altitude north of Dugzo. And unload with a 25 nautical mile radius of 6,300 feet, which is lower than Bloemfontein's TMA altitude. In addition to this, we have the VOR DME approach to runway 20, for example, with an MSA of 7,800 feet. All this is to say my request to climb to flight level 905 would naturally be put on hold until Sut Durin. Remember, it's a key VFR reporting point that sits on the TMA Alpha boundary. Now, the reason being is you have quite a number of part 1 to 1 traffic, yes, at times part 135, but mostly part 1 to 1 like Semair, Airlink, and previously Mango Airlines arriving and departing Bloemfontein in the morning. And we were departing in the heart of it all. So, a quick shout out to the photographer Zulusia Mike Kilo. He's been taking some great shots and cockpit videos of Mango Airlines. Uh, from <clears throat> various airports and just flights across South Africa. So check him out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay, 
As we approach the VOR station Golf Alpha Victor, you will notice it is also inside a general flying area, specifically the Johannesburg general flying area. But sometimes these general flying areas over the radio are not only termed as, let's say, the Johannesburg general flying area, but also termed as the ID code. So for example, for the Johannesburg GFA, it is termed as the Delta 182 Alpha. So on the radio, you would say um, traffic in the, de in the Delta 182 Alpha, Zulu Sea, Fox Zulu India, etc., etc. Um, so the only place that I've read so far that uh, the use of the ID codes is in the Cape Town area. But in terms of Johannesburg and in terms of Bluefontein, I have not heard the use of the ID code. So, um, your choice, but I think what is most commonly used is the actual names uh, of the general flying areas. So, again, the Johannesburg GFA. Golf Alpha Victor is therefore used as an IFR training station for instrument rating students. Um, so, they are typically learning VOR intercepts and VOR codes. Overhead Orlando Power Station in Soweto, we are well and truly into the Johannesburg Special Rules area. Due to the high frequency in VFR traffic below the Johannesburg TMA, like IFR standard arrivals and standard instrument departures, they are standard routines, altitudes that which traffic to fly to safely transition or route to their destination. For us, our routine is Golf Alpha Victor, Orlando Power Station, Santon City Tower, and finally Grand Central Airport. Talking about IFR traffic, looking at the Johannesburg TMA, let's see why it's so important to not bust the airspace above. Looking at the Nibex 2 Charlie arrival onto runway 21 left 
at OR Tambo International Airport, you notice how it routes overhead the Victor Victor NDB. VFR traffic can easily route overhead this point, but at this portion of the star, the lowest flight level is flight level 110. So there's significant spacing. The issue lies as you near Grand Central Airport, where the altitude drops to 8,000 feet. Remember, routing northbound in the special rules requires you to fly at 7,500 feet on OR Tambo QNH. And the TMA starts at 7,600 feet. If you were to climb, you would trigger a number of traffic and resolution advisories from TCAS. Thanks guys for joining me on another video. Just going back to the approach onto runway 17, you can see there's a full on crosswind from right to left. There's also a full on embankment surrounding the runway. This is only my opinion, but I think the embankment itself creates eddies over the runway. So to my surprise, as I fled, I was pushed to the left, even though I switched from crab to straight and level. 
so perhaps I should have come in more from the right before crabbing or used the wing low level method. A technique that is not used in the airlines or any turbine aircraft as far as I understand. Anyhow, thanks guys for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy this content and stay safe.